MATLAB! Hello! In this video, we will look at a simple example of using MATLAB to store variables and perform a calculation. We will use that to discuss proper variable names and the proper definition of the equal sign. Here, let's try to compute the volume of a cylinder. We will do this with two calculations. First, we will compute the area of the top circle. Then, we will multiply that area by the height of the cylinder. To do this, pause the video and type these four commands into the command window. What follows is a sped up version of me doing it. Hopefully you found the answer of about 75.4. This seems like a simple exercise, but quite a bit was done within MATLAB to make this happen. Pause the video and jot down all the things that happened. Here is my list of some things that happened. You should see that four variables were stored in the workspace, one for each command with an equal sign in it. Notice that these variables were not all necessarily just one letter. Three of those stored variables were used in a later calculation. If I didn't define R, my command for computing A top would have failed. One variable was used that I didn't define, pi. This is a special value that is always available in the background of MATLAB. Another example of a special value is i, which MATLAB knows by default as the square root of negative 1. Two results were echoed to the command window, r and vol. Two results were suppressed, height and a top. How do you suppress an output? Use a semicolon. A variable in MATLAB has a different definition than you might be used to. It is simply a region of memory containing an array. So the variable A might hold a single value. The variable B might hold a whole table of values. The variable C might hold a sentence. Here we see the rules for variable names. Variable names must begin with a letter. After that, they can use any combination of letters, numbers, or the underscore character. That is the only special character allowed. No spaces, no parentheses, no dashes. Variable names can be anywhere from 1 to 63 characters long. Be descriptive in the names. For example, if describing the radius of a circle, use a variable named radius rather than just r. This can prevent confusion. Variable names are case sensitive. This means that capital A is different from lowercase a. When writing codes with many variables, you will want to use comments to define the key variables so that you or anyone else reading your code doesn't get confused. At the bottom, we see two lists. One has proper variable names. Remember, these must start with a letter and then can use any mix of letters, numbers, or the underscore character. These improper names all fail that requirement. The most common mistake I see is the use of parentheses. This means something else to MATLAB, which we'll explore soon. The equal sign in MATLAB does not mean the same thing as an equal sign in math. The proper name for it is the assignment operator. The equation x equals x plus 1 is mathematically impossible. How can 4 be equal to 3? But here we see that it is possible in MATLAB. So how is MATLAB interpreting it? The assignment operator means that we first do our computations on the right side, and then, afterward, we store the result to the variable on the left. You will typically see the equal sign written in pseudocode as an arrow pointing to the left. The former x value will be overwritten by the new x value. So when I enter this in MATLAB, notice how there is no memory that x ever equaled its previous value. 
Lastly, here are some useful clearing commands. You will be using these often. Sometimes you want to erase the temporary memory. To do this, type the clear command. This erases all variables from the workspace. If you only want to delete specific variables, then you can list those out after clear. Let's look at this in action in MATLAB. First, I'll clear only the variables A and radius by specifying them. Now, I'll clear everything in the workspace. CLC wipes clean the command window and gives you a blank slate, but it does not impact the variables in the workspace. Finally, if you have a figure window open, CLF will wipe out the plot that's in the figure window.